And I'm just going to start by telling you a story. I'm going to sit down. <laughs> story time. Right. Now, I'm going to base this um, you know, off personal things that I get to see. So something really cool about my job is that I get to see people succeed and or fail you know, on a daily basis. And after doing it for lots of years, you get to see lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of data to see why do some people succeed really well and why don't other people succeed very well. And you start kind of seeing patterns and trends. And we have this thing that keeps happening, you know, especially here in CrossFit, over and over again. Can everyone see those rings that are really high, the ones that are wooden? Who here is scared of those rings? Especially when they're really high and you see that there's things like muscle-ups in a workout. Yeah. Yeah, who here is scared of um, seeing pull-ups in a workout? Yeah, put your hand up. You're scared of pull-ups in a workout. Scared of muscle-ups in a workout. Scared of backflips in a workout. <laughs> this is empowering. <laughs> double double, double backflips in a workout. Alright, so my point is we're all scared of something. And the reason why we're scared of that is, you know, there's something about that thing that we're maybe haven't, we haven't conquered yet. So I'm going to tell you a story. This story involves two athletes. You may know these two athletes. The athletes just remember to do this referring to all of you guys are athletes. Anyone who does CrossFit is an athlete. Everyone who's participating in these crazy workouts, you know, on a weekly basis is, is an athlete. So you need to give yourselves, you know, some credit when, when I use that word. So it involves two athletes. Now there was a workout, and this might have been a while ago. And in this workout, you know, there was a whole bunch of different stuff. The workout, I think, was an AMRAP, and it was maybe 12 minutes long. And basically, the workout started with wall walls, and you know, these two athletes are huffing and puffing, they were really competitive with each other, so they were like going head to head, you know, they were doing five reps, and the other person was doing five reps. As soon as one person puts the ball down, the other athlete was looking at the other athlete to see if they put the ball down. They were trying to pick the ball up quicker than the other athlete, and they kept going forwards and back like this till they got to 150 wall walls. And when, when they got to 150 wall walls, both athletes had to go to the next part of the workout, which was double numbers. Now, in this workout, both athletes had to do 90 double numbers. Now, anyone who's ever done a double number before, it's basically a jump where you do two rotations for skip before you land again on the ground and you keep repeating that. Now, if you've never done 150 wall walls and then you have to go do double numbers, you're really fatigued, you're really tired, your shoulders are, are really tired. And because it was an AM round, this means there's a little bit more to go of this workout. Both athletes wanted to get it done so they can move on to the next part. Now something really interesting happened in this workout. After the double unders, we had muscle ups. And we didn't just have one muscle up, so we had 30 muscle ups. So this is a really hard workout. And both athletes had never tried a muscle up before this workout. Now both athletes, you know, when I asked them how they felt about doing this workout, one of them said, I'm really excited for it because I know today I'm finally going to get a muscle up. Today's finally that day. I know it, I can feel it. And when I asked the other athlete how they were feeling, they were like, I am not going to get so I'm just going to do my best until I get to that point and you know that's going to be me and I'm going to see the other athlete and say goodbye <laughs> who's going to take the train onto the muscle up village and I'm just going to stay here in the non-muscle up station. So you know I see both of these athletes and they finish the double unders and they chuck the rope and they're heading up to the rings and one of them is standing nice and tall and they're looking up to the rings and they're shaking out their arms and they've got determination look in their eyes and they're looking at the rings and they're you know grabbing onto their hands and they're putting on that false grip and the other athlete's also doing the same thing, he's looking at the other athletes and he's putting on the false grip. And one of the athletes isn't paying attention to what the other person's doing. One of the athletes is just you know, focused and they know they're going to get it. They pull up, they pull the rings up to their chest, and they do the swing, they swing forwards and back, they pull their elbows back and pull bam, they get into the muscle up. You see a humongous smile light up their face. Cool. It goes from left to right, lights up the whole room. Cool. It was just the class, but the cheers like, ignited the entire room. You know, everyone's like, Finally got muscle up. He presses up to support. He doesn't want to come down. He's like, well, I got this far. <laughs> Why would I want to get down from this one? <laughs> the other athlete, on the other hand, couldn't get it. He kept looking at the other player, and you could see it in his body language. Something really interesting that our body does. When we're feeling really confident and really proud, we've got a nice good way about us. When we're really feeling really shy and we're feeling defeated, you know, we start shrinking down, and eventually it's like we're lying flat on the ground. <laughs> And that's what this athlete was like, because he didn't really believe in himself. He possessed all the sort of skills that the other athlete did. These athletes were really epic. They're really, really, really similar. Really, really similar. They could both do pull-ups, they could both do dips, they could both do a whole bunch of other movements. But one of them didn't believe in themselves, and they didn't believe that they could do it. And so much of our life and our ability to succeed in these challenges, you know, if it's something simple like, I want to lose four kilos, 
comes down to whether you believe that you can lose four kilos. It comes to whether you believe that you can get the most you can out of these 28 days. That story that I just told you was about me and Lauren. I was the athlete that didn't get it, and Lauren was the athlete that did get it. <laughs> <laughs> now Lauren believed in herself, and she does, she's never doubted her ability to, to go into those, those situations. But I'm like a lot of you guys, and I just get to that point where I'm like, I'm not sure that I can really do this. And, you know, it's those, it's that little change in mindset, you know, that changes everything. There's a really awesome adaptation that happens in CrossFit. Who here, um, put your hand up if you can do something that you couldn't do before you walked into this gym. Cool. Who here can do, can lift more weight than they thought they could before they walked into this gym? Cool. Who here, when they tell their friends what they do, they go like, you shouldn't be doing that. Cool. <laughs> All right. So, just because whether we believe or whether people around us believe that we can do something or not, should not be a dictator or a very significant factor in our own ability to really go and achieve the thing that we want to go and achieve. And there's always going to be, um, maybe we don't have the right social network around us to support what we want, but the greatest adaptation of CrossFit, this is what I love about it, never happens in how many muscles you have, how ripped your six pack is, or um, you know, how hard your biceps feel, or how good you look into that new dress you bought. The greatest adaptation of CrossFit happens between the ears. And this is why we choose this method over other methods to train people. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a mental component to all this. When something's so hard, it changes you as a person, and it shapes you. And it allows you to realize that it's not whether I can or I can't do things, because we all, and I've seen every single one of you guys, and looked you guys in the face and seen your eyes, when we get to that point in that workout, it's like, I'm not sure that I can do this, or I'm not sure I want to lift that, or I'm not sure that I'm going to do it. And the greatest adaptation that happens is between those years. So for today, what I want to talk about is this bottom triangle here. So what we've got here is a little triangle. And I really love it because I think in a, no matter what we change this triangle to be, it's going to keep being the same thing. So we've got the leaves. Cool, which will be in this corner over here. And your beliefs dictate what you do and who you are. So every, we all have beliefs. Some of us have beliefs that are really cool and really awesome that help us a lot in life. And some of us have beliefs that are hindering us from our progress. And you, we need to figure out what are good beliefs that we should associate ourselves with that are going to allow us to succeed. And what are some shitty beliefs that we just need to like kick out the window that are stopping us from succeeding. Now, whatever you believe is going to lead to an action. Which is this corner over here. Now, from every action, there's a result. So no matter what you do, whatever you act, there's always a consequence, which leads us to the next part. A result. A result leads you to believe something. A belief leads you to act on something. An act leads you to find a result. And it's this continuous cycle. Now, the big problem a lot of us have is we try and take action without really figuring out what our belief is. And if we take the wrong action, then we're going to take the wrong result, and the wrong result is going to lead to a different belief, which will eventually lead to a different, act, a different action. And we're going to have a different pyramid than the kind of pyramid that I want you to have. Now, what I want you to figure out is, I want you to realize, what, what, are, what are your beliefs? And what are some negative beliefs or self-limiting beliefs that are stopping you from really succeeding? Now, self-limiting beliefs, and some of you guys, might have heard, heard of these before. Of things that we believe, that maybe aren't true, that we believe to be true, that are stopping us from getting to a certain point. Now I've got an exercise for everyone to I want everyone to stand up. Cool, I want everyone to bring their hands like this. And I want everyone to reach as far back as they can. Just keep a mental note of where you're going to. Come back. Alright. Now when you do the same thing, keep your hands here. And I want you to go this much extra further than when you just went. So go back now again. Go a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further, a little bit further. The same way you went before. Good. Come back. <laughs> Who went further than last time? Can you hand up? Yeah. Yep. Cool. Who pulled something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Alright, we'll sit back there. Without realizing it, no matter what we do, we always put a gauge on it. 
but like I'm going to succeed, but I'm not going to succeed heaps. I'm just going to kind of succeed. Cool. So who here doesn't think they could ever get a six pack? Put your hand up. All right. Cool. <laughs> now let's analyze why do you believe that? Because other people can, right? But other people are six pack people who get six packs. <laughs> But not us, we're going to be over here in the non six pack group of people. <laughs> All these beliefs are bullshit. Like, they're not, like, there's nothing really that could stop you. Like, you, your own belief is going to be the thing to stop you because you believe in when you can't. When your nutrition gets hard and when it takes time to tighten everything up, that you're going to be like, okay, well, I've gotten as far as I wanted to go. And now that it's getting that little bit more challenging, I'm just going to, I'm just going to chew, I'm going to go back and happy where I got to. And where we put our mind, where we put our goals at, you know, really what, what we're trying to reach for is really going to dictate how far we're going to try and go in that journey. So what I want everyone to do while we, okay, good, fine, yeah, always the story this book. Um, what I want everyone to do is I want you to think about one goal that you'd like to achieve in the same 28 days. I want you to close your eyes as you do this, and if it's lame, you're like, you know, blah, blah. Just close your eyes, think about what goal you'd like to achieve in the same 28 days. Thank you.